Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of Hormel Foods Corporation, ticker symbol HRL. We're looking at Hormel Foods today, both as a subscriber request and because the company is a dividend king. Dividend kings are members of the S&P 500 who have consecutively increased their dividend payouts for each of the past 50 years. Hormel Foods has consecutively increased their dividend payouts for each of the past 56 years, and they recently announced that they're going to be increasing their dividend for next year as well, meaning that they're going to be a dividend king of 57 years. Years. They're also paying out an above average dividend yield of 2.3% right now. So we want to look at the business today to try to understand if this dividend is going to be potentially healthy and sustainable going forward and get an understanding of the financials of the business. Currently, they're trading for $45.69 per share. We're recording the video while the market is open, so their share price is going to move around a little bit in our analysis. Right now, Hormel's stock price is down 1.5% over the last year. Even though they're slightly down, that's beating the S&P 500. Over five years, Hormel is compounding at a rate of 5% annually. Over 10 years, they're compounding at a rate of nearly 12% annually. And going back prior to the global financial crisis, over the last nearly 18 years, Hormel Foods has compounded at a rate of about 11% annually. And their average dividend yield over this time would be in addition to this compounded annual return. Over the last 10 years, they've averaged a dividend payout of about 1.8%. So that's an approximation of what would be added on to this compounded annual return. Right now, Hormel is trading about a dollar above their 52-week low. They haven't had a lot of volatility in their stock price over the last year, but they're down about $9. A little under 2% of their shares outstanding are currently sold short, and Hormel has about a $25.5 billion market cap. For additional background about the business, Hormel Foods is a protein-focused branded food company. Its brands include namesake Hormel, Spam, Jenny O, Dinty Moore, Applegate, Holy Guacamole, Planters, and Skippy. The vast majority of the company's revenue comes from the United States, with 64% coming from U.S. retail, 28% coming from U.S. food service, and 8% coming from international. By product type, in fiscal 2021, 23% of revenues were shelf staple foods, 18% was poultry, both branded and commodity, 55% was other perishable food, and 3% was other primarily nutritional products. The company holds the number one market position in shelf staple meat, shelf staple ready meals, pepperoni, natural and organic deli meats, and the number two position in bacon, turkey, chilled ready meats, and peanut butter. The company was formerly known as GOA Hormel and & Company and changed its name to Hormel Foods Corporation in January of 1995. Hormel Foods Corporation was founded in 1891 and is headquartered in Austin, Minnesota. So for our fundamental analysis today, we are performing the Select 6 analysis, taking a checklist-style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Hormel Foods based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still a work in progress and it's an opportunity to learn in public, so it will continue to improve and get better over time. With that said, let's get right into today's analysis. Starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. So there are two key reasons for this. The first is that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. And the second is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns. And these business returns are captured here by return on capital. So by asking for a benchmark of 14% or higher, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the overall quality of the business being about twice as good as average. So Hormel's return on capital has been declining over this period. However, it's still coming in in the low double digits. Fiscal 2022 ended at the end of October for the business. And over their last 12 months, they're earning about an 11% return on capital. And so while that return is down from where they were in 2018 and 2019, averaged out Hormel's earning about a 14.2% return on capital. So just barely coming in above that 14% benchmark we were looking for. But nonetheless, still returns on capital that are twice as good as that of an average business. So this is a check here on metric number one for Hormel Foods. Next up for metric number two, here we're taking a high level overview of the growth of the business. So we're looking for revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth over the last five years. And this metric is all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these are going to be up for this to be a check, or if even one of them is down, this entire metric will be an X. Over this time, Hormel has grown their revenues by about 30%. Their net incomes are just down very slightly, down by about $13 million on about a billion dollars worth of net income. So they're basically flat but again, just very slightly down. Their free cash flows are somewhat similar. They're just very slightly up over this period, up by about $4 million on about $850 million of free cash flow. Again, for all intents and purposes, that's basically flat as well. So with their earnings being slightly down, this is gonna be an X here on metric number two. As the business is bringing in more revenue but earning about the same amount in their earnings and free cash flows, they have seen both their gross and their operating margins go down over this period. 
Next up for metric number three, here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the business by looking at Hormel Foods on a per share basis. So we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years. In the previous metric, we learned that their earnings are basically flat. They're just down very slightly over this period. So their earnings per share are really going to depend on what they've done in terms of their shares outstanding. And Hormel Foods has kept their shares outstanding pretty much flat over this period as well. They've only diluted existing shareholders by about 1%. So that's likely coming from something like share-based compensation. So with both their earnings and their shares outstanding being pretty much flat, but just down very slightly, their earnings per share are down very slightly over this last five-year period as well. So this is another X here on metric number three. So far through our first three metrics, we have one check and two Xs. Next up for metric number four, here we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the last five years. So this is very similar. Again, their free cash flows are basically flat over this period and with 1% shareholder dilution, they've actually issued new shares faster than they've grown their free cash flows. This means that their free cash flows per share are slightly down over this period as well, similar to their earnings per share. So this is our third X in a row here on Hormel coming in on metric number four. It's also worth noting that throughout all five of these years, Hormel has pretty much had about the same ratio of their earnings that they've been able to convert into free cash flows in all of these years. That's not always something that's typical for businesses. And there may be something structural at work that makes this the case for Hormel. Just something interesting to point out there as well. Then next up for metric number five, here we're evaluating how the business is utilizing debt. So we don't want to be investing in overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are going to be at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. We want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the amount of free cash flow that they produced over the last five years. So relative to where they had been historically, Hormel took on quite a bit of debt in 2021. However, they prioritized repaying this down. Right now, they have about $2.4 billion worth of net debt, which is about the same as they were at when they ended fiscal 2022. And over this time period, Hormel has produced about $3.9 billion worth of free cash flow. So that's more than enough free cash flow to be able to healthily support this debt load. This increase in debt came from about a $3.5 billion acquisition of planters from Kraft Heinz in 2021. Through this acquisition, they also acquired nutrition, cheese balls, and corn nuts as well, in addition to three production facilities. So ultimately, to understand if this acquisition was value additive for shareholders going forward, you would just want to dig in and understand this deal in more depth and see how the company would be potentially breaking out some of these segments to get a deeper understanding of this acquisition. Again, though, it looks like relative to the debt that they're employing in their business, the company is bringing in quite a bit of free cash flow. And so this is a check on metric number five. Also then our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this will potentially give us a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury and potentially give us another reason to be interested in Hormel. So we're using their total enterprise value because it's going to take into account both their market cap and their net debt position. And it's going to give us a picture of the economic reality of the business that's more similar to as if Hormel were a private company. So right now, Hormel has about a $28 billion total enterprise value. And we learned that over the last five years, they produced about $3.9 billion worth of free cash flow, meaning that in an average year, they're producing about $770 million worth of free cash flow. So when we divide their $770 million of their average free cash flow by their $28 billion total enterprise value, that gives us about a 2.75% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield. So that's below the yield of the 10-year treasury, and that's also a little above half of that 5% benchmark we're ideally looking for. So on an average basis, this is an X here for metric number six. Also worth being aware of is that over their last 12 months, Hormel has produced about $860 million worth of free cash flow. So to get a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business, when we divide their $860 million of their last 12 months of free cash flow by their $28 billion total enterprise value, that gives us about a 3% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield right now. So both of these are below the yield of the 10-year treasury, and they're both below that 5% benchmark that we're ideally looking for to give us a slight risk premium. Just because this is an X on metric number six doesn't mean that you're going to throw out the business in its entirety. This is one of our six metrics, and even though these metrics are simple, when combined together, they can be very powerful. Then one of the reasons we're looking at Hormel today is because they are a dividend king. 
So they have paid out consecutively increasing dividends for each of the past 56 years. This puts them in a very select group with businesses such as Johnson & Johnson, Coca-Cola, and Procter & Gamble. And right now they're paying out an above average 2.3% dividend yield. However, people make mistakes all the time by blindly chasing dividend yields or dividend track records. So it's important to stop and look at the underlying fundamentals of a business like we're doing here and to look at the business's abilities to support their dividends with either their earnings or their free cash flows, depending on the type of business. For Hormel, we wanted them to support their dividends with their free cash flows. And in all five of these years, that was the case. They've steadily increased their dividends and their free cash flows while they're not up over this period have always been enough to maintain a decent margin of safety in terms of having a satisfactory dividend payout ratio. Based off their free cash flows, especially with their recent acquisition, if the business is able to maintain these cash flows going forward, it looks like they should be able to incrementally grow their dividend now and seemingly likely into the future as well. Again, this is looking at a snapshot of their last five years of performance, and past performance is not necessarily an accurate predictor of future performance. Then everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Hormel Foods, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair value for the business. So a discounted cash flow model is just like any other model in any other disciplines. Its outputs are going to be sensitive to its inputs. So here we're starting with their current free cash flows and using historical growth assumptions for how the business has grown their free cash flows dating back all the way till 1990 in order to give us a baseline projected estimate of these free cash flows out over the next 20 years. So it's up to you to do your own homework here to determine whether or not these historical growth assumptions are going to be potentially accurate and applicable going forward to do so. But assuming a growth stage over the next 10 years where Hormel Foods grows their free cash flows at a rate of 9% annually, then assuming a terminal stage for the 10 years out after that, where this growth rate is cut in half and they grow their free cash flows at a rate of 4.5% annually. If we add in their tangible book value today and we're seeking a potential 10% rate of return for the business, then it looks like a fair value for Hormel Foods is around $27 per share. So that's about $18 below where their current stock price is at. Using these same historical growth assumptions from today's valuations, it looks like a reasonable return for the business would be about 4% from here on out over the next 20 years. For both of these discount rates, there are some caveats to keep in mind. One is that these rates would be including their dividend yield. So again, Hormel Foods has about a 2.3% dividend yield right now. We would not be doubly counting their dividends. So it looks like their stock price would only be appreciating by about 1% annually from here. Two is that there are a variety of reasons why this might not be potentially accurate going forward for the business. So it really serves to hammer home the point to dig in and learn more about the business on your own. And then three, please be mindful of the fact that this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professionals. In just a minute, we'll talk about our recap for Hormel, but we have to address something first. What are the qualitative aspects of this business, especially those around some of the potential key points for a potential long or a potential short thesis of the company? So starting with some of the key points around a potential long thesis for the business, Jenny O. Turkey has experienced severe challenges with three-year average operating margins of only 7%, but steps to overhaul the segment should return profit profitability to the low double digit rate, which is expected for the long term. Number two, Hormel is embarking on a large international expansion, which should allow it to capitalize on its brand equity as it customizes its mix to align with regional preferences. And number three, Hormel is a well-managed company with a demonstrated ability to extract value from acquisitions, maintain financial discipline, and prioritize shareholder interests. Then for some of the key points around a potential short thesis of the company, number one, the rapidly evolving retail landscape poses additional risks to entrenched players such as Hormel, which could lose share to online startups or private label offerings if retailers accelerate their push into that market. Number two, the company is highly exposed to pork, which developed market consumers have been consuming less of given health concerns. And number three, Hormel's grocery product segment, which were 25% of 2021 revenues, has reported flat organic revenue growth the last several years, excluding the temporary boost from the pandemic which will be difficult to rejuvenate in a competitive marketplace. Hopefully that offers a balanced perspective around some of the key points of a potential short and a potential long thesis for the business. Now let's get into our recap for Hormel. So in summary, Hormel Foods checks the box on two out of six of our metrics. They're earning average return on capital of just over 14% annually. They've grown their revenues by more than 30% over the last five years. 
However, their earnings and their free cash flows are basically flat. At the same time, the company has only issued about 1% additional shares over this period. While they have added on debt over this time frame as part of their planters acquisition in 2021, based off the company's abilities to produce free cash flows, it looks like they're comfortably able to support that debt load. However, on both a current and an average basis of their free cash flows relative to their enterprise value yields, it does not look like the company is giving us that potential risk premium we'd ideally be seeking in comparison to the yield of the 10-year treasury. Then looking at Hormel's dividend profile, so again, Hormel is a dividend king. They've consecutively increased their dividends for each of the past 56 years, and they recently announced that they'll be doing so for a 57th year. Hormel's paying out a 2.3% dividend yield, which looks like it's well supported by their free cash flows. Although in order for that to keep growing, they're going to have to keep growing their free cash flows as well, or risk having a larger and larger dividend payout ratio. Then finally, performing a discounted cash flow analysis of Hormel Foods based off those historical growth assumptions dating back all the way till 1990. If you've done the work and you believe those assumptions, then it looks like from today's valuations, you could reasonably only expect about a 4% rate of return going forward from the business with a little over 2% of that return coming directly from their dividend yield. So again, there are a number of reasons why this might not be potentially accurate for the company going forward. So it's worth reiterating that this type of analysis is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor. This analysis instead serves as a beginning and holistic understanding to help you determine whether it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about Hormel Foods. One resource that will definitely help you stay up to speed with what's going on in the market and help you learn more about the business is Seeking Alpha. Checking out Seeking Alpha directly supports the channel as I'm part of their affiliate program. So most of you probably know Seeking Alpha as a source of community written articles on different stocks. But over the past little while, they've actually become a lot more than that with their new offering, which is Seeking Alpha Premium. Premium has a number of different features where you can track, buy, hold, and sell ratings on your favorite stocks. These ratings are from the Seeking Alpha community, Wall Street analysts, and Seeking Alpha's algorithm. You can see earnings call transcripts, investor presentations, SEC filings, and press releases all in one place. You can add your own margin of safety targets and get alerts for when your favorite stocks hit that level. You can get unlimited access to Seeking Alpha articles, and you can tailor your reading experience based on the type of investor you are. You can get 10 years of financial data on any stock to help you with your analysis. You can also import your portfolio into your Seeking Alpha dashboard to make researching easier. And if that didn't convince you, the best thing is that an annual plan is only 99 bucks. That's only 27 cents per day through my referral link down in the description below. Normally premium is $239, but they are currently running a general offer for $119. But if you use my link, it's only 99 bucks. So check it out if you're interested. So as a value investor, you ultimately want to conduct this deeper research as if you're going to own 100% of a business and you can truly understand the ins and outs of that company and understand the essence of that business going forward. So through this deeper research, you'll ultimately learn more about the qualitative and the quantitative aspects of Hormel Foods, and you'll likely be able to determine for yourself what a reasonably appropriate intrinsic value for the business will be. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Hormel Foods Corporation, ticker symbol HRL. Again, we looked at Hormel Foods as both a subscriber request and because the business is a dividend king. This is continuing on with our analyses of dividend kings and dividend aristocrats. So I'm happy to make a video on the company. And if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Hormel Foods with me and have a great day.